welcome back to this final episode of Makings of a Guide Dog. All right, Lewis. Good boy. Find inside. Lewis and I are off to Northern Ontario for our first real wilderness adventure in the boreal forest. This is my first time flying with Lewis. He sure seems comfortable on a plane. And now for a three hour drive north of Sudbury on logging roads. No sidewalks up here, just deer, moose, bear and wolves. Yeah, you're bear proof now. You're bear proof. <laughs> You ready to go? Ritchie Falls Resort has been in operation for over 100 years. It's now owned and operated by a nearby First Nations community. Lewis and I are fortunate to have Matthew Al as our guide for the next few days. He'll also be sharing with us the indigenous knowledge of his community, as well as the changes his people are witnessing to the surrounding forests and lakes. Forward. There you go. Good boy. Lawrence. Hey, how you doing, Matthew? Very well, thank you. Good to see you. Good to see well, you. thanks for having me up, man. Thank you for coming. This, this is Lewis. Hello, Lewis. Yeah, he's the new guy. He looks like he's anxious to get out there in the field. We are, yeah, we are. I think what we're going to do this morning is we'll probably head to a small little remote lake. It's an unassuming lake. There really isn't a name for it. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those lakes in in around this area that uh, is plentiful with uh, with bass. Perfect. So and there, that's a there's lots of those, eh? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we can so get a little meal of those together, no I'm problem. I'm certainly hoping so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what? It. Knock on wood. But yes, that's the game plan. <laughs> All right. Matthew, Lewis, and I travel as far as we can go in his four wheel drive pickup before heading into the forest on foot. Beautiful walk through the forest. It was really nice. Really set the mood. There's not a lot for deer to browse on in this forest here, right? Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, there, there isn't much food for deer to eat here. And the two, if you look at the species, uh, the technical name I think for the deer is Odocialis virginianus. Yeah. Um, they don't cohabitate so well with moose. Oh so, yeah? Yeah, so where you see healthy populations of deer, you see a decline in moose population. Yeah, really? Yes. So moose are okay. They like this kind of forest. Absolutely. This is moose forest. This is very. Uh, this is very traditional area where a moose would go through. I mean, it's a perfect transitional zone. You have plenty of water around here, plenty of food, plenty of browse. So yes, this is an excellent area for moose. Have you had some forest fires up here? Um, smaller ones that have been contained. Nothing that has been really uh, detrimental to the area. Do you think it's getting hotter the summers up here? Drier? Well. I definitely see a change. I know my people talk about it all the time. Yeah. Water levels fluctuating, temperatures fluctuating. Yeah. You know, before you could pretty well set the seasons by a clock. Yeah. And now it seems that uh, things happen so sporadically that it's hard to actually um, predict or even determine, Lewis, you know, on. when a season will begin yeah. and when a season will end. Here in the middle of nowhere, came to this gorgeous little lake. One tiny little trail to get there, you wouldn't know there was any humans around. Matthew tells me this lake was recently taken over by smallmouth bass. Lewis seems to be enjoying himself here. After a morning of hiking, canoeing, and fishing, it's time to meet up with Kyla Owl. Kyla's in charge of preparing a shore lunch featuring a fusion of indigenous and European ingredients. Bannock made with wild blueberries, fried potatoes and fresh fish, and tea made from chaga, harvested from nearby birch trees. Ah, the sound of Ritchie Falls. Won't be long now before Lewis and I are snug inside a warm, dry cabin. The sound that that waterfalls comes down and the, the first snowfall of the year is just making is it... Is it snowing? It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it's just making it an absolute magical moment. Oh I mean, my goodness. What a way to experience an October uh, day. Matthew, this has brought me full circle, man. Like I started this whole thing with this dog uh, project, you know, being big brother to all these young pups who wanted to become guide dogs right. and sharing with them my knowledge of the outdoors, right? I started in the winter and now it's winter. That's great. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. And you know, what do you think was the most memorable part for Lewis? You know, I have to admit, 
when just coming on the plane, I wanted to see what he'd do about the plane, and it turned out it was no big deal for him. And the van ride, no big deal. And the gravel and everything. But I think walking through that spruce forest uh, with you, and just the smells and the quiet and the, it's something I hadn't done with the dog, is just to be in that sort of uh, intense forest type situation. Normally we're on the water. Like right. we're at boat launch, water, out on the water, back to the boat launch, into the vehicle and back home again. And whether it's a canoe or a boat or whatever, it's, we don't spend enough time in the forest. So it was, that was magical and explaining to me the trees and the, uh, the, the, the shaga and all of that, you know, all the, the life and how it gives life to all these different animals. I think, I think he appreciated that. I did appreciate that for sure. You know what? We appreciated uh, having both of you here. Yeah. What an experience. And just to get out in the environment and see you two work together, it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the hospitality here at Ritchie Falls uh, Lodge is just above and beyond anything you possibly imagine. It's interesting. I, I've never really thought about a guide dog school training guide dogs to be in the outdoors. It's something I just did with my guide dogs. To be able to influence and shape a new guide dog program that's gonna be across Canada, it's been a tremendous opportunity for me and uh, a way I hope will help other people enjoy the outdoors like I do. Lewis is with me, all the other dogs I'm told ended up in really cool jobs. They're all across Canada. Reliable Piper lives in Ontario with Larissa as her guide dog. Dependable Daisy now lives in British Columbia, where she guides Sarah. Big Sherman now lives in Nunavut as Noah's guide dog. Gentle Dunstan is well on his way to becoming a CNIB ambassador dog. Curious Vincent was withdrawn from the program and now lives with a loving family in Ontario. And Loyal Marion lives in Manitoba as Tracy's guide dog. I've learned that as much as Lewis likes to walk quickly, he's also a very careful guide over rough forest trails and rocky shorelines. He also has a very brave heart. Not once has he shied away from an adventure. Simple things like fishing below Ritchie Falls, just like I did when I was a kid and still had sight. Losing my sight over the years has meant giving up a lot of things. Maintaining my connection to nature is important to me. Having Lewis at my side means it's possible for me to continue as an outdoor enthusiast. Thank you, Lewis, for agreeing to be my new eyes on the world.